We are back. Yes, we are hanging out with you on this Thursday. Rob Ellis, Derek Gunn, and Barrett Brooks. We're Sports Take. Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Thrilled to have our next guest. We haven't talked to Damo in a little bit. Uh, you can check out his work, jacobsports.com, as well as the 33rd Team FB. Follow him on Twitter, at PDamo. Damo, I'm, I'm going to guess, and I'm not trying to make you sound old. I'm trying to show the longevity of the career. You're an <laughs> Ironman. Respect, has it, has respect. It, has it been 40 years since you've been covering the NFL and the birds in, in this town? In this town, uh, yeah, uh, 41. Wow. How about that run, man? That's awesome. That is awesome. He's got the he's got the crest credentials behind him to, to prove it in case you had any questions, right? <laughs> um, so Don, right. let, let, let's let's hit a couple things here. Um, we know how he's aggressive. Uh, they're sitting there at 10 and 30, which is an enviable position for sure. Um, how do you think the first round goes for the Eagles? What, what do you think ends up happening in terms of trades? What are they going to prioritize? What position? What player do you like? How do you think it shakes out? Well, with that first pick, I, I think they'll stay put unless, you know, I can't see them trading down. They need to, they need to pick up a good defensive player probably with that first pick. Uh, so I would, I would guess, you know, I mean, they've got a, they've got a, they've, they've kind of got a tentative plan on what they, you know, the guys they think will be there at 10 right now. I'm assuming there are a couple that, that they really like, so there's no reason to move down unless somebody comes and gives them just a, you know, incredible offer. Um, I think it's more likely they move down with that second pick, the number 30, um, you know, if they can get a, a you know, when you look at next year's draft, and I, I realize it's kind of nobody is because of, uh, we're looking at this one, but right now they've got, I uh, believe, five picks in the first three rounds. You know, if somebody offers them a first round pick next year to drop down with that second pick. Uh, they'll, they'll look real hard at it because, I mean, that, you know, they're, they're looking at that plus comp picks next year. I mean, they could have as many as eight or nine. Uh, draft picks in the first three rounds next year. Mm -hmm. The question is, where does that, you know, where is next year in their priority list? What do they want to do this year? Uh, do they feel, what do they feel they need this year uh, to, to, to make another run to Super Bowl? Because this is not, you know, this is not a reload year. They, they have no intentions of, of not contending. So, uh, you know, uh, if I had to guess with that first round pick, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm probably guessing what you guys are. It's going to be a lineman. Uh, you know, it could be an offensive lineman, but I, I would think it's going to be a defensive lineman, either interior. If Jalen Carter would fall to them, say, which I doubt he will, uh, more likely an edge rusher. I mean, right now you look at their edge rushing situation. You know, they've got Reddick, they've got, uh, you know, 35 year old BG, uh, and they've got uh, uh, Derek Barnett coming off an injury. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm not putting a whole lot of uh, not right. hope in Barnett, but so I'm looking at them right now with a three-man rotation. They need to find a fourth. So, um, you know, I, you look at a guy like Luke Van Ness from Iowa, guy that can slide inside, can play outside. Uh, you know, that right now that that would be a good possibility at ten. Damo, when you look at the the draft order. Uh, the nine teams ahead of the Eagles right now, assuming that three of the first four picks are going to be quarterback. The other six teams in front of the Eagles all need defensive players. Um, do you think Howie would get skittish enough to try to move up with that 10 pick, which means he would have to try to give, he would have to give up some other capital probably more so next year than this year, because he doesn't have the draft capital this year. I wouldn't think so, Gunner, only because when you look at all the needs they have on defense, I mean, okay, let's say there's a run on the edge rushers, which is very likely after the quarterbacks. Well, you know, they've got cornerback to deal with. I mean, Darius Slay's 32 years old, not played particularly well the second half of last season. Uh, so, I mean, it's a, it's a position they need to address as well as edge rusher, as well as interior defensive lines. So, uh, you know, I, that's why I say they can sit there and whatever they need, they're going to find. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, all things being equal as far as, you know, old guys at um, the cornerback position or old guys at um, rushing the passer. And, you know, I think they do go those two ways. But um, how steadfast you think 30 is going to be? I mean, we, we talk about 10, but 30. Uh, 
I mean, they could use a guy. There's going to be guys like Kilo, um, Kaylee Ringo there. There's going to be guys that can rush the passer there also. Do you think they trade out just to get more draft capital later on in the rounds with not having a fourth, fifth, and sixth pick? It's possible, Barrett. You know, I mean, like I said, I, I think they're looking at stacking for next year. I mean, right now, uh, you know, Howie's got to be, you know, Howie's already been talking since uh, January about the comp picks he's going to get for all these guys they were going to lose. So, I mean, he's a, he was already thinking about next year. Uh, you know, the more, I mean, I think he looks at next year as kind of a, I mean, right now, I think what they have 12 picks, uh, in the, in next year's draft. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, it, you know, I mean, he's out, they've always been the, taking the approach that the more picks you have, the better, because then even if you screw up, you're going to hit on some. Uh, so I think that's kind of their approach, but you know, you're right. They need they need corner help. They you know they, they need things this year uh, if they're going to contend because those those things you know I mean if if those things are going to turn into holes that could could cost them. Although you know I think Barrett, I, I you know I almost think they're taking the approach this year that Kansas City takes that we're going to just outscore the hell out of people. Yeah. Uh, our and if our defense can just slow people up, we'll be okay. Right, right. All right, Damo, with that said, how much of the B. John Robinson stuff is just the fact that we've been going over this for two months? <laughs> you know, people start kind of going crazy, or how real is it in your estimation? Because he's not going to be there at 30. If they're doing this, it would be at 10, which would be completely out of character for the Eagles. But is that a possibility in your mind? Well, I think I saw where Elliot Shore Parks wants them to take B. John Robinson. So, right. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll run down Broad Street naked if they take B. John hey, Robinson. Thank you. Thank what you. is he thinking about? Why are you saying that? It ain't happening. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look at the running back situation, not just with them, but in the league. I mean, you know, this is a, this is a guy that many are saying is better than Saquon Barkley. And yet, where do you take him because of the devaluation of the running back position in the league these days? I mean, just look at what they're being paid. Uh, you know, Miles got decent money from Carolina, uh, but he was one of the few guys out there that got good money. Um, it's just not a priority position, particularly with this team. I mean, and, and you know, they 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 really, really like, uh, you know, Kenny Gainwell. So do I. I think this kid's going to blossom this year, uh, both in the passing game and the running game. And, you know, they're hoping Rashad Penny stays healthy. So I just don't – any reason for them to use one of those, you know, even if even if B. John Robinson fell to late in the first round, uh, them trading up and, and getting him. Dama, how he likes to throw us a wow factor every now and then. And I agree with you 100 percent And I've been consistent in saying I think they're gonna go defense with that with that top pick in the draft. Do you think there's a possibility they could be looking at a receiver at, at number 10 when you consider what would happen? Right now they're thin. Their front line receivers look really nice. But what if yeah. they lost Devontae or AJ for an extended period of time? Do you think that they could possibly be looking at that position as well? Yeah. You know, I don't think so, Gunner, but I, I wouldn't just count it. I mean, again, I go back to the theory of, you know, if they're taking the approach that we're just going to score as many points as possible this year, you can make the argument – that they need to get better with that at that number three receivers situation. Mm -hmm. You know, Quez Watkins did not play particularly well last year, was not, you know, kind of disappeared. I mean, you know, you look the, the, the kid from Ohio State, Jackson uh, uh, Smith Najaba. Yeah. I mean, I like him a lot. He was hurt last year, only played, I think, three or four games, but he's a slot guy. Um, I think it's more likely that they go after a receiver with if they're going to do it. With the with the second first round pick Gunner, yep. but you know George, it's Jordan. You know, I mean, Howie is very good friends with Lincoln Riley. I mean, really, you know, it it, it, it their relationship was a, a played heavy into them being convinced that that uh, Jalen Hurts could could play quarterback in this league um, when he was uh, you know before they drafted him. So, you know, he, 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 he's, his, his opinion means a lot. Now, if, if Lincoln Riley is telling him Jordan Addison can be the greatest thing since sliced bread, who knows? Maybe, maybe they take it with the 10th pick. I just don't see it happening. How about O-line, Damo? Um, Skaronsky is a guy who a lot of people like, uh, who 
you know, you could plug him in there at guard if you didn't feel comfortable with Jurgens and Kelsey size wise. How, how how much of a possibility do you think that is? You know, anything's possible. Barrett knows the uh, how much value they put in offensive linemen. Uh, oh, absolutely. Garonski you know, is he's not a left tackle. Uh, not that they need a left tackle, but yeah. generally that's the kind of the, the left tackles are the guys that are going ten or higher, mm -hmm. and and he's a uh, probably going to end up inside or uh, right tackle, which, you know, when Lane Johnson eventually retires is a need. Right now it's not, mm -hmm. and I think they're fine with Jason and uh, Cam Juergens uh, at center and, and right guard. Um, but because we've seen so many years where, where they, you know, they're the, how, the, how important they feel it is to, to never have enough offense, a good offensive lineman, it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Um, and it's almost in a position of, of need to do that right now. I mean, not need, but it'd be, kind of be a luxury to pick an offensive lineman at this point. But we did in the second round last year, you know, year before. So you can't pack, you just can't, you know, stay set fast and say he's not going to do it. But in looking at what we have here, this is such a deep draft of cornerbacks and edge rushers. Yeah. How yeah. how would you entertain getting a guy like Nolan Smith? You know, somebody opposite Hassan Reddick, who would have the same measurable six foot, he's six foot what three, six foot, you know, yeah. I think six foot three, two uh two forty, but he runs a four three four. Hassan ran a four five. We're talking about a gifted guy. Um, I know you can get him later on in the draft, but you know, if it's Howie's guy, you think Howie's guy would go ahead and pull a trigger on that at number 10? Yeah, I mean it's all gonna depend. On what happens in front of them, there, Barrett, with you know, with other teams that need edge rushers, and and who's going to be there, and how they have that first group ranked. Uh, but I mean, I think they'll certainly, you know, I think that's a. If you were asking me right now, like I said, I think an edge rusher is is probably more likely than anything, unless Jalen Carter falls into their lap. Domo, let me ask you this: is just a generalized term? We hone in so much on the Eagles, but. When you look at the whole first round this year and all the scuttlebutt about who likes who, who's going possibly where, what what team intrigues you the most in the first round in terms of what they could potentially draft? Well, I mean, the teams that that, that have multiple picks, um, you know, the Jets, uh, I think Seattle's got uh, multiple picks, you know, how they're going to use them. I mean, the Jets are a team – you know, I mean, they had one of the best young defenses in the league last yep. year. Uh, it's only going to get better. Uh, and, and they're probably eventually going to get Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> so, I mean, this is a team that everybody is picking to just make this huge leap from 7 and 10 to whatever. Uh, you know, they play their cards right with these with their with their first round picks. Suddenly they're a team that, that could be uh, contending for the AFC title next mm. year. So. You know that intrigues me, Joe, you know, especially you know when you consider Joe. You know Joe. We all know Joe uh, Douglas, yep. their GM. Um, he's kind of on the hot seat because I'm sure Woody Johnson's sitting there uh, d down uh, up in uh, North Jersey right now and and thinking the same thing that everybody else is that we're going to go to the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> and uh, you know if, the, if he ends up drafting uh, guys that don't play in the in the first round. You know, Joe and 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 Robert Saleh, uh, both are are you know going to be feeling the heat. Tombo, we what about? I'm just curious what you think about the Eagles' off season. Um, you know, we saw them bring back both of their corners, even though Slay was already under contract, but it looked like he was going. They're both back. They bring BG back. You know, they they, they lose Hargrave, CJ, GJ, Sayamalu, Miles Sanders. I guess would be the highlights. I'm probably missing the the linebackers as well, Edwards and Epps. Overall, how would you say that they did, and are they how much are they a lot worse than they were last year? The same, better? How do you view it? Well, I mean, they we knew they were going to lose a lot of free agents, a lot of good free agents, because you know you just had to look at the, their cap situation and what you know the guys that that were leave that were free agents, what they were going to be demanding. So uh, you knew it was going to be ugly. I thought they minimized the damage, you know, kept some guys that I didn't think they'd be able to, mainly Bradbury, uh, and, and somehow kept Slay, um, you know, kept him happy. I think more more than them keeping him happy. 
he, he stuck his toe out in the rest of the league and found out that uh, there's not a dying need for him. Uh, so suddenly he got a little bit more reasonable. Um, you know, safety, I mean, losing, I thought they were going to be able to keep, uh, you know, CJ uh, Gardner Johnson. That didn't happen. And that's going to be interesting to watch. I mean, they signed a bunch of guys to one year contracts, a lot of them at safety. You know, if, if somebody like Terrell Edmonds pans out, you know, they're looking pretty good. Uh, they let all their, you know, they, they got stripped at linebacker, uh, but they don't seem to care about that. Uh, linebacker seems to be a position that, uh, and, and they're not alone. The linebacker seems to be a position that we can, every team seems to think now, uh, except for a few clubs that still have it as a priority. Most clubs feel we can figure a way around that, you know, by strengthening the back end and getting a good pass rush. So, uh, ultimately, it comes down to the pass rush, though, and, and losing Hargraves was 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 a big, big blow. Not one you didn't expect because there was no way they were going to be able to pay him uh, what it was going to take to keep him. Um, you know, they did get Cox to come back, but I don't know how much Cox has left. Um, you know, maybe you know he wants to. I think he wants to finish his career playing with BG, the two of them together. Uh, so maybe he, you know, I mean, he hasn't really been a special player since 2018, but maybe, you know, so, sometimes guys just finish strong and, and that's kind of what they need from him. And they also need Jordan Davis to step up this year. He did not last year, you know, early on, he was a good run stuffer. Then he got hurt. And then we never heard from him pretty much. Uh, he needs to, he needs to elevate himself as a pass rusher because right now, they don't have a lot inside to get pressure. I, I'm not a big Milton Williams fan. I think he's too too light to play inside, uh, at least for a, a whole bunch of snaps. So, I mean, I think they need Jordan Davis to step up this year. We'll see if he does. Delmo, let, me you me, let me ask you this, man. We're going into this. We haven't signed our quarterback yet. We know the deal is going to get done. But – I mean, should we be a little bit nervous right now that it hasn't been done? Will it be done before the draft? Will it be done, you know, before training camp? It'll get done before training camp, I think, Barrett. Uh, There's just so many unknowns here. One, he's working – you know, he's got an agent that we don't know much of. Nicole Lynn has not done contracts like this before. I mean, she's, she's young and capable, uh, and I'm sure she's going to do fine. Uh, but I don't know if she's waiting for Burrow and Jalen and Justin Herbert to get their deals done before, you know, so she has numbers to play off of uh, or, or what, uh, you know, it could, Herbert and, and Burrow, it could be a while. I mean, they, you know, they, because they were first round picks, you know, they have a, a you know, they have the option year, so they're not going to be free agents after, uh, you know, after 2023. So, um, but I, you know, I, I don't think Jalen wants this to linger and neither do the Eagles. I think so. I, I think they, because, because their OTAs are so insignificant right now, I mean, they have six of them, I think, and they got rid of mini camp. Um, uh, I don't think it's a big deal if he, if, if this thing lingers into the spring, uh, it would be if it didn't get done by training camp. And I think, it, you know, if you, if you ask me right now what the percentages are, Barrett, of, of a deal getting done by training camp with Jalen, I'd say 90-10. Domo, you've covered this team a lot longer than I have, and I still, for the life of me, can't understand why this team totally shuns the linebacking position as a high priority. How do you put your spin on it? Because you've watched this thing a lot longer and a lot more closely than I have. Yeah. A good question. Uh, I think, it, you know – well, for one, they you know I think they they really are high on the Kobe Dean, even though he didn't play last year. So they figure, okay, we're plugging him in. They don't play three linebackers anymore. I don't think they will with the you know with the new guy. Uh, so you're talking about mostly two linebackers, sometimes one linebacker. Safeties are playing linebacker now. So I mean, I just think they feel, you know, you if you have versatile people on the back end, you can move you know you can move people around and get away without having more than one capable mm -hmm. linebacker. Although, I mean, Nakobe Dean is not a big guy. He's not, you know, we don't know how durable he is. So, uh, it, you know, you're kind of playing with fire a little bit. You're going to be giving up some, you know, some yards on the ground. Uh, but when you look at, you know, Desai kind of has the same uh, approach 
I mean, he's from, you know, he's from the, the Vic Fangio school, but, you know, he's, he's a guy that doesn't blitz much. So, you know, you don't need linebackers to do a whole lot of that, which kind of uh, wastes one of the skills Dean has. Uh, but, you know, he, he's give, you know, you look at his team in Chicago when he was the defense coordinator there two years ago and last year in, in Seattle, they gave up a lot of run yards. They were down near the bottom in, in rushing defense. So, and they still were a, a pretty good defense because they, they, they rush the passer pretty well, pretty consistently, even with low blitz percentages. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, so I, I mean, I think that's one of the reasons they hired him. I mean, besides the fact that he's highly regarded, he, he fits, you know, I mean, we know how much they thought of Fangio. I mean, they had him, you know, here at practices, watching practices. I mean, Nick Sirianni loves him. Uh, I thought he would end up being a defensive coordinator, but they didn't need one until he had already signed with Miami. So they got his clone, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, and, and, and Fangio like him, you know, feels that in this, in this game today, you can kind of get away without great linebackers. Hmm. Damo, uh, up front on the defensive side, you know, Jordan Davis is going to play a bigger role. You're going to have others stepping up. Are they good enough across the board in your estimation on the edge and inside? I don't know. It's a good question. Uh, like I said, I don't – I mean, Jordan Davis has to play better than he did last year. But you expect this – you know, I mean, he's a first-round pick, you know, a huge body – and you expect them to kind of elevate his, you know, most guys to elevate their play in the second year if they're, you know, if they're good players. So, uh, but they don't have a lot of depth in the middle. And that's where, you know, in today's game, you've got to have an interior rush. That's what bothers quarterbacks. That's what, you know, and, and uh, you know, so I don't, I don't know if they have that right now without Hargrave. Uh, like I said, I'm not a big Milton Williams fan. I apologize for my dog. Neither's the dog. Neither one of you guys are milking. <laughs> <laughs> On the edge, I'm you know I'm just not sure about the depth there either. Uh, you know, I said they you know I've got they've got three really good guys, but two of them you know I mean BG's BG's old, but he's he's coming. You know, he's a year uh, one more year removed from that Achilles, so maybe you know maybe he's got one more you know very good year in him. But they still you know that's why I feel they need to get somebody in this draft on the outside, you know, who can rush the passer and help them uh, as a rookie. You mentioned, you mentioned a name a short while ago that I've been talking about off, off this off season. It kind of piques my interest in Derek Barnett. And, you know, you said, I'm not expecting much from him, but do you think at this stage of his career, especially after losing an entire season that ended in a Super Bowl run, we will finally see that maturity level in his play in terms of the mental mistakes, not overtaking his physical ability. Yeah. There's a reason he's still here, uh, you know, Gunner. So I'm um, yeah, right. Right. You got right. to think, you got to think they believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know him well enough to know if, uh, if another year of maturity is going to change his approach, uh, change his attitude. So, you know, they, they certainly could use something from him. I mean, yeah. they need him to stay healthy and they need a contribution from him. Mm -hmm. Damo, are they still the best team in the NFC? Boy, um, them in San Francisco. I mean, you know, I really would have liked to, you know, I would have liked to have seen that ch NFC championship game with San Francisco having a healthy quarterback last year. I think it would have been a fun game to watch. Yeah. It was, it was, it was painful watching what we did watch. I mean, if you're, a, if you're an Eagles fan, it, obviously it was great. You, you knew early on they, you know, they were going to win it. Uh, but San, Fr San Francisco still scares me, that defense, because they're, they're the ones that ended up with Hargraves. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a, <laughs> they're going to be even more dangerous. Now, you know, if Purdy is legit uh, and ca can come back and contribute this year, you know, I'd pick them right now probably as the uh, NFC favorite. All right, Ooh. Damo, listen, keep up the good work. Uh, oh, you just punched Barrett in the gut with that one. Ooh. Yeah, a little bit. You got a little one, <laughs> one in there, too, a little, little, little jab. Uh, Damo, keep up the good work, man. JacobSports.com, you can check out his work, the 33rd team as well. He also hosts a show on WBCB, uh, WBCBCBSSports.com. Is that right, Damo? Am I, am I getting that right? Yeah, yeah, WBCBSports.com. 
Okay. Damo, thanks, man. Appreciate you hopping on. Appreciate you, bro. Take care. All right, All right. Thank you. All right. Good insights there from Damo. Uh, have a, insight, uh, yep. Run down Broad Street naked if they take Beach. <laughs> there, <laughs> there's the headliner <laughs> right there. Um, all right. Let's get a timeout. We'll come back. Uh, and we will start center sites, by the way, two o'clock. We're going to talk, uh, get a little bit more into the NFL. And there might be some movement on the Washington Commanders uh, sale, which will update you on uh, new helmet to reduce concussions. Uh, a lot to get into. A lot to get into uh, for sure. Dexter Lawrence. But we're going to dive into the draft prospects at the receiver position. So we'll do all those things at 2 o'clock, some Sixers and some Phillies when we come back. Don't go anywhere. Derek Hunt, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis. We are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network on this Thursday. All right, let's talk about Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group because knowing who to trust with your hard-earned work, all right, your hard-earned pay, your hard-earned money is critical. I can tell you from personal experience, it was a struggle for me for a while. I found the right person, and that's Jim Murray and Principal Financial Group. For you, it could be retirement planning. It could be 401k review, insurance review. If you have a small business and you're trying to figure out your employee benefits, that's yet another resource that Jim can help you with. I know personally, I've entrusted my IRA, my 401k rollovers with Jim, and it could not have worked out any better. In fact, I, I was talking to him this morning about some things. He's always there for a consultation. You can give him a call and find that out. 610-996-4751. 610-996-4751. You could also email him, Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, dot Jim at principal.com. That's Murray, dot Jim at principal.com.